Well, this video is going to be confusing. Whether we like it or not, fursuits are the face of our fandom. From CSI to Dr. Phil, the media sure seems to have a field day with the people that own big fuzzy animal costumes. My friends call me sexy. What? But are fursuits really for everyone? It's a common misconception. A furry is anybody that dresses up in an animal costume. But what if I told you that this isn't completely true? A furry is actually someone that expresses interest in anthropomorphic animals, whether it be through art, literature, movies, or costumes. While not every furry is a fursuiter, a big percentage of furries are, or at least wish to own a fursuit in the future. While you don't need a fursuit to be a furry, owning one is an awesome way to interact with others and connect with the fandom. But are fursuits really for everyone? Of course, there's nothing stopping you from wearing a fursuit, but some people might find that it's not the perfect hobby for them. So with that said, let's look at the cons of owning a fursuit. Alright, first thing, let's talk about comfort. I've heard people say that nothing can prepare you for putting a fursuit on for the first time. Between the heat, the claustrophobia, and the bad visibility, wearing a fursuit can kind of be a nightmare. If you have sensory issues, wearing a fursuit can be extremely stressful and extremely uncomfortable. When you're in a fursuit, you more or less have to relearn how to interact with your surroundings. It's not unusual for a fursuiter to trip over their own feet or rely exclusively on their peripheral vision to get around. By assuming that every furry needs to have a fursuit, we ostracize people in our fandom with sensory and mobility issues. Wearing a big, bulky, heavy costume for even short periods of time can be extremely dangerous for some people. Fursuits are also really, really expensive. For starters, a good quality partial suit will cost you anywhere from $600 to $1,000, and that's not even accounting for complicated markings or add-ons like magnetic eyelids and moving jaws. But what about the hidden costs of a fursuit? Between extra luggage fees on trips, repairs, general upkeep, and accessories, the cost of a fursuit doesn't end after your initial purchase. For some people, it can be awfully hard to justify spending thousands of dollars on a costume that's only worn a few times a year. And what about the social aspect of fursuiting? Like it or not, wearing a big colorful costume opens you up to a world of unwanted social advances. When someone suits in public, there is usually an expectation of how they are supposed to act while in costume. For example, it's a pretty common occurrence for me to get approached by tons of children and their parents while I'm at our local fur bowl, even if I don't necessarily consider myself a child performer. While I love entertaining people and making them smile, some fursuiters are a lot more laid back and would just prefer to rock their costume without being approached. Even outside of that, conventions are usually filled with adults that want to escape their everyday life and take a break from the real world. When fursuiting starts to feel like a job, it's no longer fun for anybody. Remember, costumes don't equal consent, and you should always make sure that a fursuiter is comfortable when interacting with you. So if fursuits aren't for you, then what else can you do to show people that you're a furry? Well, lucky for you, the creative people in our fandom have made plenty of alternatives for you to enjoy. Hyena Agenda and Nomad Complex offer furry-themed apparel from hats, hoodies, shirts, and more. If you're looking for something a little more personalized and in your face, Lemon Brat offers custom fursona hoodies, kigus, backpacks, and more. Physical laminated badges are also an awesome way to show off your furry pride, especially at conventions. Think of it like wearing a reference sheet on you at all times. There is no limit when it comes to commissioning artists to show off your persona in their own unique style. Some badges even have movable parts and double-sided variants to allow for a greater range of customization. Of course, if you're really dead set as dressing as your persona, you can always get a simple pair of ears and a tail. Plenty of fursuit makers offer this as an alternative to their full-blown fursuit masterpieces. By wearing these, you can show off your fursona, all while keeping cool and fursuit free. But if wearing stuff in public isn't your cup of tea, the furry fandom has seen a boom in freelance merchandise including pins, stickers, prints, and more. My personal favorite creators have to be Liddy Arts and Meat Spice, who sell a wide array of products that will pretty much suit all of your furry needs. There's certainly no shortage of fursuit alternatives when it comes to our fandom. I think it's not entirely fair to act like fursuits are the end-all, be-all of showing off your furry pride. There are plenty of ways to be a furry, 
And I think we should embrace her diversity instead of shutting people out because of some tired old stereotype. Some people just don't like fursuits. And as far as I'm concerned, that doesn't make them any less of a furry than someone that does. So what do you guys think? And do you have any advice for anybody that's on the fence about purchasing a fursuit? As always, leave your opinions down in the comments below. If you like what you see, feel free to check out the description down below for my Patreon, tip jar, social media pages, and more. This video was made possible by my awesome supporters on Patreon, Coffee, and watchers and subscribers like you. A big thank you to Digigo, Orlando, and Patch Wildchalk for being my patrons. Did you like the video? Toss a like or a subscription my way and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload or stream. Thanks for watching! Have a great day, be creative, and as always, stay sweet!